What do you think? That's the only protest that gets people upset here. I know. Yeah. Which shows you we're hitting the mark. Right? Hitting the mark. You don't think so, sir? I honestly have no idea what it is. It's uh, abortion is child sacrifice. It's, it's murdering innocent human beings. Yeah. Well, Jesus said that, that he's the truth. He said that the truth will set you free. And there is an objective truth that comes from God alone through the revelation that he's given us in the Bible. You see, the Bible's not any ordinary book. The Bible is a book that claims to be the inerrant and infallible, self-authenticating revelation of the one and only true, holy, self-existing Trinitarian God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what spiritually dead people do. You, you laugh at the good news of Jesus Christ. And that, that's, I'm not surprised because you're spiritually dead. And that's, that's what spiritually dead people do. Spiritually dead people laugh at the message of the gospel. So you're physically alive, but you're spiritually dead. And that's why Jesus, who is the Messiah, said you must be born again. Because otherwise, you cannot receive the words of God. I'm not actually spiritually dead, though. Why not? Because I attend church. Okay, that's not going to save you. I have been saved. How, how have you been saved? I've been rebaptized. Okay, so but baptism doesn't save you. Baptism doesn't save you. Why would you go to hell? Like, if you died today, why do you think you would go to heaven? Because you go to church and because you were baptized? No, I'm just asking, like, I'm a serious question. Do you, do you think you would go to heaven if you died? Today? I believe so. Why would you? I believe I'm a good person. Well, do you think that that's what it takes to get to heaven? Not Jesus? Jesus has nothing to do with it? No, and I have read my Bible. I have So what about, you're not saying anything about Jesus? The, the, the church you go to doesn't teach Jesus. It's not Christian. Yeah. So, but why did you didn't say anything about Jesus? So you don't need Jesus to get into heaven? You 100% need Jesus. But you didn't say that, though. You say because you're a good person. They don't teach the gospel at your church. They don't they teach do you to believe teach the gospel. Which church do you go to? Fox. Okay. Yeah, well, there you go. I mean, for you to say I'm a good person, that denies Romans chapter 3. The Bible says there is none good, no, not one. Nobody's good. The Bible also says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. So your goodness is not going to get you into heaven. So your pastors, either your pastors have given you false teaching or you have not understood what they were trying to say. And I guarantee you, I promise you, well, I, I, don't, I can't promise you because I don't know your pastors, but I know something of Vox Church's. So, serious question. Yes. Do you think by promoting this in a college campus that's very liberal is going to get um, Hopefully. Will, will be, they'll be faced, either way, they'll be faced with the truth. They'll be showing that what they're doing is wrong. If they're killing their babies, they're insane, and they're guilty before God. Hopefully, that will lead them to repent and say, you know what? Maybe I'm sinning against God. I need to repent and believe in Jesus. That's why we have this time. Now, yeah. the choice is up to them. But the apostles did what we're doing. Real, real apostles, real men of God. They preached in nations that were God, just like America. They had idols. They rejected God. They hated God. They hated His word. And they went out and they told the people. They were rejected much more than us. We get cut out. They got murdered for Jesus. So like you said, we don't know what church is teaching this generation, but it's not the truth of the gospel that's really going to disciple people. I was a fake Christian since I was a little kid. I thought I was going to heaven because I, I thought I believed in Jesus. I at least knew something about the gospel. I did think that it was because Jesus died for my sins and rose the third day. But I didn't know that, that God calls us to repent. Stephen, how you doing? God bless you. It's good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. This is. She goes to Vox Church and she thinks she's going to get into heaven because she's a good person. What do you think? I mean, do unto others. That's a baby. I thought that was like hibachi. I know. They, they made hibachi of this little baby. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's what abortion does. Damn. So that's why we're abolitionists. We're abolitionists calling for the absolute end of abortion. Because we believe, we believe human beings. This is one. No, I, my other sign, equal justice for all people, all human beings. And we believe that this is a human being right from the very beginning. And they should have equal protection and equal justice under the law. But we live in a time where uh, children can be slaughtered legally in the United States. What's that? Um, yeah, I think so. I think that baby did. But even if it doesn't, 
it's still a human being. Because there are people at times in their lives where they don't feel anything, but they're still human beings. So it, it's an ontological reality of who you are as a, a human being. And if you are, if all human beings are created in the image of God, they deserve equal justice and equal protection under the law. So we're abolitionists. Do you, do you know any of the abolitionists of old? No, nah, I don't follow anything political. I just no, it's not political. This is moral. I mean, back in slavery days, people might say, well, you know what? That's a political issue. We don't want to be involved. And that, so the abolitionists said, no, that's not political. It's moral. The slaughter of innocent human beings. Boy, that's a... You're a woman. You're a woman. <laughs> Boy, that's a good argument. <laughs> yeah, but if I was on your side, you'd love it. <laughs> I am. <laughs> God bless you. Jesus is the Lord. Every knee shall bow. See that? It, it, it rises people's stuff. Yeah, yeah. Really? Wait, wait, if you. I also believe that yeah. God is an all forgiving God, God and all loving. No matter what you do, truly. You so you're a universalist? All if that's what you call it, then that's what I am. You think that a divine being at the center of this universe looks at people getting raped and get, getting beaten and all that? He just says, eh, it's no big deal. He put us here with our body. Yeah, he did. With free will. It wasn't inevitable. It's not like he didn't think that people could do acts of evil. Yeah, but how do you know this? How do you know this? We're proof. Where's the proof? So, but we are, as, as human beings, we must have divine revelation because if we are able to do whatever we want, then why don't we just indiscriminately kill or rape or do whatever? What's that? It's choice. It's but is it right and wrong? It's the part of free will. It, but is it right and wrong? Is it right or wrong? But I mean, do you think child molestation is wrong? Who doesn't think it's wrong? Okay, so then you have right and wrong. So people should not be able to do whatever they want. And they can still get... Of course they do. Yeah, and they should go to prison for it. That's why we have laws. Someone, but like, okay, okay, look. So what do you do? Say, for example, a girl gets raped, right? Mm -hmm. She gets Terrible, raped. terrible, right? But according to your worldview, it wouldn't matter because and, and people could do whatever they want. In my worldview, she, she should be able to, like, 100%, like, say, for example, this 12-year-old girl gets raped. She should be able to go get an abortion. Okay, but according to your worldview, before we even get that, before we get there, why, why, What's wrong with the uh, raping a woman? It's it's, it's, okay, it's morally wrong. It's Thank you very much. Wait, wait, wait. Is it morally wrong to rape a woman? Yes. Okay, so now you have a morality that there's right and wrong. Before you said human beings should be able to do whatever. Wait, you just said human beings should be able to do whatever they want. But now you just said that people should not rape. I said people. Can you say it's morally I said wrong. People can do whatever they want. They say they should. And I no, no, they no. Have free will. But you you say that there's right and that there's and wrong. Said, and I also said they get penalized for it. I didn't say they don't. You won't. Yep. You can do whatever. You so want. what's that? Doesn't mean a cop will not stop you and say, hey. Amen. You're going to jail. Yeah, but that's why we have laws because laws are based upon a moral foundation, just like he said. What else is it? There's other laws. There's corruption. Like right. That's what. How is law not religion? Sure. Did you know that a majority of domestic violence in this country is caused by overconsumption of alcohol? Sure. But my question for you would be, uh, I, not necessarily. Um, no, I do not believe that alcohol should be banned just because of the potentiality. I mean, you, we potentiality, a, a person's fist could be used to kill somebody. Should we chop off their hands? Well, the potentiality that someone can go rape someone. Right, so do we have laws on potentiality? Yes, we do. In what way? What I'm arguing is that you have a moral code. How do you know what's right and wrong? You just are being arbitrary. You're saying abortion, of a, abortion is okay, but rape's not okay. What's that? Abortion to you is morally wrong. Uh, how do I know? Because I have an, an objective. Mo let me finish. Let me finish. Let me let me finish. Because I have an objective moral law to determine what is right and wrong. What's yours? How do you know what's right and wrong? I have freedom of religion. I'm an American. Yeah, but how do you know what's right and wrong? You're the one that brought up morality and right and wrong. Hey, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. Good. I have a question. 
Christian. Yeah, yeah. So I am a Christian. Okay. What do you mean by that as a Christian? I'm a Catholic. Okay. I go to church. Are you born again? No. Okay. So Jesus, all right, that's not going to save you because Jesus said in the Bible, you must be born again. And to be born again means that God does a supernatural work in your heart as you repent of your sin and trust in Christ alone for your salvation. So Roman Catholicism ain't going to save you. So that's why I, what's that? Okay, but what's your question? Go ahead. I, I don't want to distract too much. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. In the first book of the Bible, when uh, is Adam's creation in the first Yes, book? yes. Genesis 1. So, in the first book of the Bible, when Jesus said he breathed life into him, and then he was, mm -hmm. then he was a human being, mm -hmm. do you think that also applies? It doesn't say that uh, in Genesis that he breathed life and then he was a human being. So that, that then he was a human being is not there. But we also know, physiologically speaking, that little babies in the womb, they actually breathe through the placenta and through the umbilical cord. The, the system that they do have is that they're getting oxygen from their mother and they actually breathe in the amn amniotic fluid and out, but the oxygen is coming through the umbilical cord. But I'm, I'm also, I'm also a medical Okay. Um, I'm a certified MT Oh, cool. So you save lives. Yeah. But, um, so we believe that these are human beings and because we believe that from the moment of fertilization these are human beings that they deserve equal justice and equal protection under the law. It would be like us being back in Nazi Germany saying, you see those Jews over there? They deserve equal protection and equal justice under the law. We're abolitionists. We're not pro-lifers because Roman Catholicism and pro-life are, are in bed together. So back in slavery day, it was the it was the abolitionists that said that no slaves are not slaves. They are people made in the image of God and deserve equal justice and equal protection. So we're just taking the abolition message from back then and bringing it to today. I just want to ask you because um, historically before Roe v. Wade, women who actually did have natural miscarriages were not at all. No, that's not true. That is true. That is not true. Find it. Find it. I, I, I have two. And never, never has a woman been criminalized because she had a miscarriage. A natural abortion of the child that's inside of her. That does happen and never in any history of the United States. It, it, find it. And if you could come back and find that for me, that would be great. Okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. School had no problem with you guys being here. Yeah, um, we, we, I've been here many times. You have to remember, this is a, um, this is, for lack of a better term, it's a rented space, and sometimes... No, we're, we're yeah. No, 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 go ahead. The students or some um, activities... So when does a person become a person? Because a zygote in a woman's womb is not a dolphin fetus, and so your argument has no validity whatsoever. Well, when does a person become a person? What's that? So before they're in the womb, the, the location makes a difference of what makes a person. You believe that? So the Jews that are in Nazi Germany back in the past, because they lived in Nazi Germany, they were not human or should have been afforded human rights because they were in Nazi Germany, because there was a legal right to slaughter them. So that's, your lo that's your location argument. No, that's a big problem. Abortion gets outlawed, abortions are still happening. They're just gonna happen in an unsafe way. Okay, well, think about, let's examine, okay, let me examine that argument. Okay, no. So I'll tell you why. Let me let me address it. Will you let me will you let me answer? So you asked me a question. Can I Hold answer? Hold on. No, I'm gonna answer his first. So no, you asked me a question so, and now you want to redirect to him? Yeah, just so I want to answer that very quickly. So by your argument there should be no laws. Because there are laws in the books that say thou shalt not murder, correct? And murders still happen. Do we still have murder laws? Why? Wait, wait, wait. Do we still have murder laws? You don't gotta ask your argument. Questions. Exactly. So your argument fails. There's a difference between. I, I want to hear a good argument. I want to hear a good argument. That, that's a lousy argument. 
We're not going to pass laws to protect human beings because even if we pass laws, they're going to still be murdered. So can I respond to what you Okay, now go ahead. Yes. So what are you responding to? in regards to geography is not what we're discussing here. Why not? I'm talking location inside of another human being. Mm. If you another be, human being. Okay, you're interrupting. If I, can I finish? Um, so a human being. I'm, no, I want to be clear. I want to make sure I understand. I'll let you finish. You're saying about a human being in a human being, correct? You said another inside of another human being. That so that another that, that needs the human being that okay. is residing within okay. to live. So the human being inside of the human being needs that human being to live. Okay. So can I have the source of that photo? Um, I don't have it. I honestly don't, but I could get it for you. Yeah, but that's the, called denial. Because to say that this is not real. This is actual uh, abortion. No, you can. Yeah, I, I'll get the sources for you, but I don't have it right now. Yeah, fair enough. So the human inside of the human, the body inside of the body. Keep going. I just want to be sure I understand you. I'm telling you that the comparison you tried to make doesn't make sense because no one's discussing where you are geographically. We're discussing whether or not you're inside of another person. Because I'm arguing ontology. You have to live inside of another person to sustain life. You are not your own person. Why not? The, the, the child in the womb does not have... It does not... Or the tomb, depending on how you look at it, right? <laughs> right? So when does a human being become a human being and worthy of equal protection and equal justice under the law. Okay, what about ki kids that, um, little babies, I mean, I had a little kid that had the RH factor where the mother's blood was attacking the baby. That baby, should we have aborted it, killed it, or whatever, or done what we did to try to save the life of that child that was inside of my wife? So the mother's body was attacking the baby? Yeah, which is the RH factor, if I understand it right. He, she had one type of blood, my son had another type of blood, and that meant the antibodies from her body were attacking the blood of that child. So you're telling me that antibodies in the mother's body are attacking the baby, so the best mm. solution is to put the baby through torture medical experiments to make it live. That's not what I'm saying. To just ending That's not what I'm saying. No, the, the, what they wanted to do is take the amniotic <laughs> fluid. So my next child, I said, no, we're just going to have that child. But when does a person become a person worthy of equal justice and equal protection? That's my question. So before that, they have no protection. Correct. They're not human beings. Correct. What are they? I don't know. What are they? <laughs> okay, now, come on. You, you're telling me that a, 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 even a zygote is a germ? Okay. And so are you. What are you? What's that? Yeah. Yeah, according to your worldview, I believe that all human beings are created in the image of God. Therefore, they're worthy of equal justice and equal protection under the law. That's all. Very simple. And your God tells you this is the best use of your time? The, the Bible does. Hey, sir, don't touch my camera. Don't touch my camera. All right. No, that's, that's a $600 camera, so that's right. Then save babies? No. No, to save babies. What's that? Oh, no, you'd be surprised. No, we've actually changed. Not changing your mind. Because you're not open-minded. But you're not, you're not open-minded. I'm open-minded. I've reviewed what I need to, and I know that you're wrong. And, and what, on what basis, sir? On what basis can you tell that I'm wrong? I mean, I like when you guys come around because it's fun to laugh at. No, that's not an argument. <laughs> You could, you could laugh. Argument. I could argue with the grass that's growing over there. It doesn't mean it's a good use of my time. Your argument's about as valid as arguing with the grass on the ground. I, I do that. I do this. Like, you know, like, so my point is... Yes! No way! I'm trying to get some worship music going here. Can you take requests? So, do you think that that's a... a, a a wonderful thing to do to suppress somebody's right to freedom of speech? No, he, you know he, what he's doing. He's trying to interfere with what we're saying and doing. Yeah, but we're not being loud, we're just preaching the gospel. 
So we'll still. We'll still. Preach it. That's fine. See, that's not an argument. See, we're, we're, we're trying to have real reasoned arguments with human beings because we respect you. We respect you as human beings and we'll have a, a, a coherent argument. Why not? Why not? Thank you. I appreciate it. You're going to draw a crowd and I appreciate it. I can't hear you. You know, hey, maybe you need to hear this. There's forgiveness for having an abortion. There's actually forgiveness. Hey, sir. Hey, don't touch my camera, okay? Oh, okay. Thank you. What's that? Oh, okay. That's fine. What's that? Oh, good. Okay. I appreciate it. I mean, you're wasting your time, but that's fine. What do you think about this? I mean, what do you think? Do you think that these are human beings made in the image of God? You just need to wear a school face paint right now, right? What's that? You just need to wear a school face paint right now, right? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Say it again. I, do I understand why you have face paint? Is that what you said? I'm trying to hear you. I don't understand. So we're here talking about Jesus Christ to people. You see, the Bible says that all who hate God love death, and that's what this has become. And so that if you turn from your sins, see, you're, you're hardened in your sins and your trespasses, and God can and will forgive you if you trust in Christ. That's the beauty of the gospel. So you don't have to go to hell for all eternity, because that's what this holiday is all about. What's that? Okay, I understand that. I know you are. You're celebrating death because you're, you're, you're going to die in your trespasses and sins. And we're telling you how you can be freed from your sins and trespasses. I don't feed into schizophrenia. What's that? I don't feed into schizophrenia. How is the schizophrenic? I'm sorry, baby. Where's the schizophrenic? I'm sorry, baby. Where is it? Where is it? It's okay. Run. Run. <laughs> He's actually helping us. Thank you for drawing a crowd. So we have somebody that drew a crowd for us. <laughs> thank you for, thank you. Oh, they'll follow us. They'll follow us. Okay. Potentially. Thank you, sir. Thank you for drawing a crowd for us. We appreciate it. Thank you. No, you did. You drew a crowd for us. Hey, thank you all for coming and listening to the man playing the instruments for us. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. And y'all can be forgiven through Jesus Christ. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I pray for your mom. I pray for your mom. Yeah, she can. See this? She had me, though. She had me, though. Y'all are afraid of a logical argument. <laughs> What's that? How's it dumb? See, I'm, I'm willing to engage. Oh no? Hey, we have a guitarist here to draw a crowd. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey,
hate, bro. Your nah, you call it hate. What's that? Your religion is being imposed upon babies. Your religion is being imposed, and so children are dying because of your religion. God bless you, sir. Bless you. Thank you for playing for us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Give him a big hand. Thank you. Thank you. Give him a big hand. <laughs> Thank you. So we're here to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be made right with God. The way that you could have your sins forgiven by the power of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That you don't have to be in bondage. See, you all are in bondage to sin and death. But through the gospel of Jesus Christ, you could be forgiven. Thank you. He's with us. <laughs> You're with us. <laughs> You're drawing the attention for us. Thank you. Let's go, Marcus. I'm so sorry about your siblings. To tell you the truth, sir. I'm very sorry. Hey, you don't touch my signs. You don't. You don't touch my signs. No, you don't. Don't touch my signs. No, you don't have a right to touch my equipment. I don't touch your equipment. You don't touch my equipment. You don't touch my equipment. Don't touch my equipment. What's that? I don't need it. I actually, I attended here. You know, I did here. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Where's your ID? Yeah. What's that? It's a public university, sir. I understand it's public. But wait, wait, so First Amendment, do you understand First Amendment? Hey, do you know what the First Amendment is? My court, my court I want to protect you as well. You're not protecting me by forcing me to have an awful choice. Why do you have sex out of marriage then? Okay. Are you married? You better listen to Kyle. you virgin before you got married? I repented. I did have sex before marriage, but I repented. Look at you, we got a fucking hypocrite over here. No, I don't care. I'm just saying, people love people who have to adultery. I mean, look at pornography. I want that. Yeah. Hell no. That's a kid. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. We preach, we preach, we preach exactly what Jesus preached. You, you use Jesus' name to try to impeach on women's rights, and that's fucking wrong. What about the rights of the baby? What about the baby? What about the baby? What about the rights? What about the rights of the baby? What about the rights of the baby? What about the rights of the baby? God bless you. Thank you. Keep playing. Tell your mom. So judge the Tell your mom. Tell your mom. Tell your mom. There's forgiveness. Tell your mom. You see the guy, the guy playing the guitar, the guy playing the guitar, he, uh, his mother aborted three of his siblings. And I'm just saying, tell his mom, tell your mom yeah. about the gospel. What's that? That's good. I'm glad that. And his siblings are dead because his mother. He 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 shared this with me in public. Jesus that his mother killed them. By their fruits. By their fruits you shall know them. 
you have a base? You have my base. Can you bring my base with you? No, I'll go with it. Hey, thank you for playing because uh, it draws a bigger crowd. Thank you. What's that? These are abortion victims, folks. These are little babies were killed in the womb. They do not have equal protection and equal justice under the law. See, you guys, you would have been in Nazi Germany, you would have been calling for the extermination of the Jews based on the fact that they're not human beings. We're abolitionists. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're just calling for equal justice and equal protection under the law. That's all. Equal protection and equal justice under the law for all human beings, for all human beings. Equal justice and equal protection under the law. It's very simple. Jesus said we're blessed when people lie about us. We're blessed when people persecute us. Hey, we're willing to talk. evil against us for his sake. So we're blessed. So y'all mocking us, we're getting blessed for that. That's what Jesus thought. No, yeah. See, ma'am, you could read this. See this? Not every abortion comes from Oh, yeah, That's true. Doesn't matter. What's the percentages of the ones that don't and the ones that do? Okay, so what babies deserve to die and what don't? Some babies deserve to die, some don't. That's not my decision. I'm not worried about the I'm not worried about the abortion. They died in the cross and they came in the No, we're doing what he told us. He told us to be That's what we're doing. We're obeying. We're obeying. Right. We're not, uh, we don't have Who do you help? I'm trying to help you go to heaven. Oh, sir. That's why I love it's you. okay. I want you to be We just believe in equal protection and equal justice. Don't make my arguments. You're not, you're not arguing my position. And I'll be glad to talk. We're reasonable people. We're glad to talk. We're glad to interact. No problem. I mean, yelling and playing an instrument, it just shows he's afraid. He's afraid. He's afraid of the argument, not afraid at all. Equal justice and equal protection for all human beings. That's all. Equal justice and equal protection. Yeah, we're abolitionists, folks. We're Christian abolitionists. And we're just telling people equal protection and equal justice for all human beings. What's that? What's that? It doesn't matter. Hey, I remember you from last time. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not human beings, right? <laughs> what other argument is there? You guys are pushing your religious arguments on these little babies because your religion says that child sacrifice is okay. Yeah, you're positive. You see? So do what you want with your body, but don't kill the body in your body. What does it mean? It means that there's a human being in the womb that should it be worthy of equal justice and equal. Damn, I got your ass, nigga. <laughs> you gotta do it. If you don't do it, <laughs> I give you permission. I know the game. Yeah, yeah. I don't disagree with the idea I don't agree with the idea of using religious arguments in, a, in order to push uh, uh, like law and a second. Define religious argument. But yours is. I mean, humanism, secular humanism has been defined as a religious baby. Okay. Oh, the baby died? 
Yeah, and, and I don't believe in criminalizing anybody with a baby that's dead inside. No, there's no abolitionist bill or anything that would criminalize a baby that's already dead inside of a woman. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. So, so what was my mom to do with it? She could go to a doctor, and, and if the baby is dead, there's no murder. That's all. That's all I would say, if the baby's dead, there's no murder. I think that they would be with the doctor, but if the baby's dead, they could do a DNC, they could do all kinds of stuff. If the baby's already dead, but you don't have a way to kill the baby. I mean, I appreciate it. But she, your, your view, in, I know, but your view imposes upon little babies. So you, the view of these people, that gets imposed upon innocent babies that can't defend themselves. officer So it's a body in the body. It's a separate human being. It's not a human being. The child, what is it? What is it? A parasite, not at all. Just because my child is 19 months old, he's dependent upon me for life. You're dependent upon the grocery store, the gas station, the clothing store. You ever see a loan? If you put you up in Alaska, you could not survive on your own. So that's a valid argument. It's a body in a body. If it, if it kills a human being, I, my view is this. My view is this. My, my view is that human beings are created in the image of God right from the moment of fertilization. And as such, they should have equal justice and equal protection. What's that? Equal protection and equal rights. But it's a body in the body. It's a separate human being. Of course it is. When a woman is pregnant, does she have two heads? It's a body inside of her body. The body is what matters. No, you're exactly right. Humanity. Humanity is what matters. This is a human being created in God's image. What's that? Where's humanity? You, from God. Ultimately from God. Why do you think God exists? Why do you think God exists? And why do you think God exists? I'll give you a, a proof for God. Sure. The impossibility of the contrary. You try to account for how there's reality, logic, um, science, ethics. How do you account for that if there is no God? No, no, you can't need to. No, 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 but see, but you can't, but you have no argument. You're just making you say, not at all. No, I'm saying on your worldview, there is no God. Then where did we come from? I don't know. Yeah, see, you don't know. Yes, I do. 100%. 100%. I do know. Hey, so you do have you know? What's that? By the revelation that God has given us in the scriptures. Absolutely. A book? Well, how do you know? I don't know. You don't know. But I do know. See, wait, wait. You read a book. If you don't know, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. If you don't know, how can you possibly say that you know I don't know? Wait, wait. If you don't know, answer this question. If you don't know whatever, how can you say you know that I don't know? I have. I have. I have on this side. You don't like my reason. Yes, I have. Absolutely, I have. The self-attesting scripture. But you haven't either. What have, what have you given as far as... What, is, what have you given? See, your argument fails because all you can say is I don't know, and I can say I do know. Just because you made up an answer. I didn't make up an answer. 
the answer was there before I came on the scene. You see? I, I have an answer that was there before I came on the scene. So you don't know, but I do. I claim, I claim, exactly, I have an epistemology that's justified. You don't. So you, you can't account for it, but you can't follow me. You, you don't have anything. Yep. So what are you arguing? You, you can't argue anything because you don't know. I can't argue with it because you haven't made an argument. Yes, I have. You have not. You said I the self-attesting scripture, the self-attesting scripture that tells us who God is, right? That it says who God is. It's a self-attesting book. It tells us where we came from, where reason came from, where logic came from, where morality does. Have you ever, wait? Have you ever read the Bible? What? Have you ever read the Bible? Where? Oh, really? Where, what's the first book in the Bible? Genesis. What's the last book? Yeah, you never read the Bible. I call. What's your name? What's your name? Don't say that Dorsey just has hair. What's your name? You probably jerk his feet off. Whatever. You probably give him that golden shower. Do you have any questions? Fair enough. No, I don't believe that. I don't. I don't view women as that. I don't believe that, sir. You're begging the question. I never said that. Hey, sir. What about this body and this choice? I, I ask you in all sincerity. What's that? No, no, it was murdered. No, this was slaughtered. This was slaughtered in the womb. This is slaughtered in the womb. So what about this choice? You can't argue, can you? You know you're wrong. Yep, this child should have a choice, but he doesn't. This child, this is not real? Denial's a beautiful thing. I was raised by Catholics. They have more beliefs. Denial's a beautiful thing. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep. Yeah. What about this choice? You can't answer that. But there's forgiveness for those who have had abortions. Whatever you say is not going to change my opinion, sir. I know. I know. But there are some people. These little guys hate women. No, we don't hate the babies. You hate babies in the womb. You've already commented on that. I know. But it's not a valid argument. It's not a valid argument. Oh, it's just to get under your skin. It doesn't really. You don't even need to have an argument. It shouldn't even be a topic of discussion. Yeah. That's what they say in Nazi Germany. <laughs> but in America, but America, we actually have like freedom of speech and dialogue and try to discover. What's that? So we have freedom of speech. Why do we have freedom? Of speech? Freedom of speech. This is taking away. Ultimately speaking, no, you're taking away the freedom of this child. That's the point. That, that child doesn't have opinions. That child is living. Not yeah, because it's been killed. It's connected to. It's but it's been connected. killed. Doesn't then what is it? It's not really respectful then to show off his dead body. Yeah, wait. That's your message then. Why does, should does it, a dead baby then? Why, why is it a pet for you? A dead what? Why should a dead baby? Wait, a dead what? Why should showing a dead baby? Well, what? Dead parents. A dead baby. Why am I showing a dead baby? See, the language comes out and the reality comes out. This is a dead baby. What? You're exactly what? right. What's that? Why are you arguing with me? Because I want to challenge you. <laughs> That's like kind of sad. I, I think but you're like, capable of, of like, dis dialogue like and discussion. No, I actually believe that you guys have the ability like to reason and dialogue and so forth. Yeah, so that is true. I respect you that way. Before I reasoned with you and you walked away from me. So I couldn't you hear you. Like I couldn't hear you. You said no. I did? Well, what was your argument? I apologize. I didn't know. Oh, don't yell at me. So I have a question. <laughs> yes. Let's say completely hypothetical God forbid. Fair enough. We get into a car crash. I really, really need a life-saving organ. Let's say, let's say my heart. I need a heart transplant. Can they take that heart from you? By force? Yes, by force. But the car crash was your fault. Shouldn't you be responsible for my um, life? Perhaps, I don't know. That's an interesting argument. So in the hypothetical, yeah, so you 
crash into me, I need a life saving transplant. They can't force it to get that to me, even okay. though it is their fault that I need this transplant. What would that be? Involuntary manslaughter? Or oh, you didn't die? I'm not dead. Okay, you're not dead. You're in the you're, okay. You're in the ICU. Yeah. Okay. But my point is, you need to voluntarily give me that organ. Mm. So even if a pregnancy, an unwanted pregnancy, is my fault, it's the same thing. They nobody can force. Except for the uh, the the flaw, I think the fallacy in your argument is, a uh, body organ is very different than another human being. So I'm arguing that this is a human being made in the image of God, and therefore should have equal protection and equal rights under the law. That's all. It's a simple argument. So, I also have another question. Mm. Have you, did you obtain any higher education? Yes, I have a master's degree. Within your education, were you ever involved with biological things? Have you ever looked at cells on a slide? Yes. Yeah, I had to. But I graduated from here with a degree in philosophy, and then I have a master's in divinity. But when you were looking at those bunches of tissues, did mm. you look at that and you were like, that's me? That's no. an equal person like me? No, but if I was looking at a zygote, then I would say, yeah, that is a person that should be have equal protection and equal justice under the law, for sure. But if I was looking at a skin cell or a cell from my hair, no. That's but not that's a human all being. We are. It's a collection of that. So then why would you have rights then if that's all you are? Because just like I can rip off a little piece of my skin, it's the same amount of cells. Okay. But that you're not killing yourself though. No, because I have cognitive thought. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the difference between a zygote and a human being. Well my son my son, I have I have far grown children and I got a little baby boy. He's nineteen months. He's just starting to have cognitive thought. He's starting to use words. Uh, and before that, when he was six months and he's not having cognitive thought, does he, should he have equal protection and equal justice under the law? But he's out though. So what's the difference is that? When does a human so, being become a human being? So there's a difference, there's a difference between when they were born. When they're born? Before that, then why do they say babies? Is there an ontological meaning to being a human being? Do you know what I mean by ontological? Is there something inherent about being a human being that makes us valuable? No. People would have different answers to that question. That's a good question though, isn't it? But, uh, but and because I agree with that, but abortion shouldn't be a philosophy. It should just be what the person needs. That's not... What, what, who needs an abortion? If someone's there, actually, there have been many women, like within this year, who have died because of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Because and they what, literally. That, I, you know, that's not. That's not. I don't believe that's true that women have. Why, why would they have? Because have they don't what? have access to life saving health care. No, actually, abortion is up after Roe v. Wade. Did you know that? Even in states where abortion is illegal, the abortion numbers are actually up. Look it up. And abolitionism, we're abolitionists. The reason is is because they say that women, and I'll, I'll, I'll use my language, women who kill their own children are victims just as much as the baby. But do you understand that there's so much nuance with this lawmaking that they make it so vague? Well, that is I don't think they do. An abolition bill would say that a woman who has a dead baby inside of her, already dead, that she can obviously get a medical procedure to expel that well, dead child. Okay, but you're calling the babies victims. What about the women that are victims? I, I've been in front of abortion clinics. They're like, I know this is a human. I'm going to kill this shit. So They're not victims. Got raped. I they took a plan B. I think that I would, you know, that he's a victim, so am I. So I'm why, sorry that happened to you. So I, I sincerely am. So the rapist? Would you have adopt the kid, though? No, yes. 100%. How many kids have you adopted? What's that? If I had an opportunity, I have if been I had offered it. Yes. You would have taken it. Uh, without question. So what in about a second. the hundreds of thousands of kids? I can't. I, I would love to. What I would love to be able to. But does that does that mean yes. we should kill the children in foster care? Is that your argument? Who's going to take care of them? So we should kill them. Who's going to take care of them? So we should kill them. You're not killing a child. You're killing yourselves. I'm not saying have the kid stab it. That's killing a child. Did you know that when we ban abortion, we actually lose more life? In what way? Because I mean, it's never been a, a, maybe it has in the United States, I don't know. But I don't know of any place in any situation where abortion is illegal in the United States. It's illegal to perform. So doctors yeah, yeah, but that. it's so not illegal for a woman. I would, as an abolitionist, in a state where there's no people to as, as an abolitionist, I would say, and you, this will offend you, that women should, who, who 
uh, commit child murder in her womb should be criminalized, should be tried under the law, 100%. So I'm going to bring up this source that I brought up again. Okay. Pre Roe v. Wade, women who had natural miscarriages were, this is a fact, they were being criminalized because the courts had ruled that their natural miscarriages were somehow induced by them. Mm. And they I've never heard that. I'd have to research it. You should. You know, I will. Because I will. That will this is pre Roe v. Wade. And then. Okay, I'll check it out get rid of it, it'll happen again. Well, they would build within the, the laws, and there have been, ab we're abolitionists again. Abolitionist bills have gone forth in different states, and within an abolition bill always says that if there's a dead child within a woman, that she has the necessity of getting that out of her. And that's not criminal. So what about children born with birth defects that will lead to their death hours, days after the birth? Well, I'm not into eugenics. I mean, Adolf Hitler was, but I'm not a eugenicist. In other words, eugenics, good genes is what eugenics means, right? So therefore, and in fact, they do it at IVF. They find cells that they don't find to be acceptable, and they eliminate those children within the Petri dish or whatever. So I don't believe in eugenics, but you're arguing for eugenics? I'm not. Okay. All right. I just want to be sure. In, in how, how you're describing... My viewpoint is genes that are able to sustain life. If a baby doesn't have those, the baby will not be able to sustain life. And then they die. So and that's a terrible thing. Have the baby pass away safely. Which, let me ask you, a, that's a good question. And I, I have them suffer for Let me ask you a question with a question. There's a person who's 95 years old and her health is declining and her mind is starting to go. Do you think, based upon that, now that her genetics are deteriorating, that we should mercifully kill her? That's up to the family in most so cases, happens, especially with like, okay. brain dead people. That is no, I'm not talking brain dead. I'm talking about Grandma Jones, who's 94 years old and she thinks that she's an apple. She's like, you know, kind of like her, she's out of her mind. Should we practice euthanasia upon that person? But she has assisted suicide program. Oh, she has messed up thoughts. She has dementia. She has Alzheimer's. Does she have half of her brain missing? Maybe. Does she have a heart? Yeah. Because some babies are telling the gender. Huh? Friends. His birthday was October. So I, I would not, so to answer your question, no. I, I don't think that we have the right as human beings to, to take the life of other innocent human beings. And I say innocent on purpose. So a person, a rapist, we, everybody throws the rapist at me, right? The rapist, he has committed a crime against a woman. He goes through a jury of his peers and has been found guilty. I would say he needs to be executed with no question. He's not an innocent human being, yes. So, but so you can kill other humans? What's that? So you can this is not a other. innocent human being. The, ra that, the rapist so should be. It's not an innocent human being. How do you know if they're innocent or not? That's why we have a trial. What if they're lying? What's that? That's why we have trials. That's why we have trials. Well, you have witnesses. You have so far. The, but he's not an innocent. See, I'm making a distinction between innocent human beings that have not broken any laws so and saying, guilty, a rapist who has broken a law and violated a woman, he should be, if found guilty, executed 100%. So what about, how does so what about execution help the mother with her time? You know what, I, I would have no problem with that. Sure, sure. He becomes a slave for the rest of his life and has to provide for that child that he produced by his own greed and selfishness because I believe he's a scumbag that needs to be, needs to suffer, needs to be guilty, 100%. Because he's not innocent. But the baby that was a product, now bringing into an abolition, or abortion abolition, the baby that's a product of that rape, I don't believe that that child should be executed because of the sins of the father who is a greedy son of a you know what. I don't know, I personally just didn't want that constant reminder. So give it up for adoption, why kill it? I would. I already said that, I would. There are many people out there. What's that? I, I haven't, if I have the people that have offered me, I would be glad to. What's that? They, they kept the children. Yeah, I was not able to. But I would, if a woman came to me and said, would you take my child? I would say, I, then, then talk to me. I'd be glad to.
But even if I can't, that still does not get rid of the principle that all human beings deserve equal protection and equal equal justice. Not necessarily. How do you know? How do you know? My best friend was in the So what? You have a you have an instance. I know people. I have foster brother. I had a foster brother, and he lives a very good life. Should we have killed him because of the potential of having a bad life? Is that your argument? Most of the time, it's not a potential to guarantee. Not necessarily. We we can't guarantee anything in this life, and life sucks. Okay, so if I if I am homeless, mm -hmm. I should bring a homeless baby into this world, raising homeless. If you're homeless, should you execute that child? Do you believe oh, here's, here's, a, here's a homeless mother with a baby. She, she slit his throat because she's having a bad day. The baby's alive. That's a complete... It's not alive in the womb? At a certain point, it's not. Well, this one is not alive now because they killed it. They went in, and you know what they do? They, they dilate the cervix, they go in with these clamps, and they feel, excuse me, they go up and they pull the leg off of that baby, That's put it in a tray. It doesn't matter, it's still a human being. They pull, but see, you're, you're in denial because I'm describing what happens. They pull, and they pulled the leg off, then they crush the skull and pull that out and have that. Well, that's obviously exactly. It's only late-term abortions. No, but no woman carries a baby for that long. Well, they do. No, no, no. I agree. I agree. They don't. But I still, I still believe it's a human being. What you're describing right now is reality. Only happens when there is a critical life. Danger no, not at all. Not. not at all. So it happens all the time. Heard of somebody getting a, a, an abortion within the third trimester. Will Honestly, I don't know. I don't know anybody. I, oh, actually, I do. I actually do know. I do know a woman that that this was back in the late '60s, and I, she said that her sister she got pregnant. She was raped. Actually, gang raped. She got pregnant, and her family and her sister brought her to a doctor under the guise of whatever, and they held her down, and she begged them not to kill their ch her child because in the midst of it, she did not want this to happen, and they pulled and ripped that baby limb for limb outside of her body. And you want to know why that was bad? Because it wasn't her choice. Yeah. But what about the baby's choice? Can that baby make a choice? Not yet. If I have a little baby in here, yeah. can you make a choice? Not yet it can't. Not yet. But that's why we protect children until they can make choices. Johnny, you can't have that lollipop. Johnny, don't put that in your mouth. I take away my son's choices all the time to protect his life so that he will get to the place where he can make good, solid human decisions. I think where the difference is here is in, within the semantics because you use the terms baby and child to speak So did you. Fetus. You guys did. You did too. What does the word fetus mean? Oh, you're talking about the Latin definition before we knew about how biology worked at all? Yeah. Embryos are human being. These are human beings. No, no. I don't so fetus still means a, an offspring of a human being. So semantically speaking, that still is using that. But what is it? But what is it? it let me, I thought we did this before. When a egg is fertilized, that's a zygote, yes or no? Okay, is that zygote alive? There's a difference between conscious human No, 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 that's not my question. I'm not talking about consciousness. Is that single cell zygote, and I'm reducing it in my argument, is that zygote alive? Yes. Okay. Like what kind of zygote is it? What kind of zygote is it inside of a woman? It's a germ cell. Wait. It is a germ cell. No, no, no. What kind of living cell is that? Is it a dog life? It's a human cell. Okay, it's a human zygote. Thank you. Okay, so we have in, from the moment of fertilization, something that is alive and something that is human. So why not equal justice and equal protection for that human being? That's behind my figure. <laughs> I mean, I... That's my argument. Do you believe that cellular life is the same as... It's not human life. ...our life that we live? A zygote is very different than a skin cell or anything else. It's not human. A skin cell is not human. But you guys just admitted that that zygote is alive and it's human. Just like stem cells are alive. 
Well, I don't, uh, stem cells, what, what do you mean by stem cells? Like where they harvest them from little babies? Stem cells are unspecified cells that can change into any other type of cell. Well, where do they get them? They get them from different spaces in between all your organs. Yeah, there's but they get many of them. Many of the vaccines, many of the vaccines are made from fetal stem cell lines. Which vaccines? I don't remember off the top of my head, but many of them are. Okay, well, let's ask. Let's ask. Which vaccines are made with small doses of a virus to, to help your immune system. Which vaccines are made from fetal stem cells? Nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies vaccines using this means derived from lung cells of fetuses in the 1960s. MMR, chicken pox, hepatitis, rabies, so Johnson & Johnson. No, but they had to sacrifice a child in order to get them. I have them. to let you know that a zygote is just a stem cell. It's just a stem cell. No, it's very different. I know this. A, a zygote has its own DNA as a human being. It has all it does, but it's still a human being that's in the process of developing. A stem cell, you can't take a stem cell, stick it in the womb of a woman, and that's going to develop into a human being. But Biology major. This is your basis. What's that? This no, a zygote is very different than a stem cell. What's that? You're equating them. Because exactly. you that no, I'm not. I'm not. The DNA. So does but a stem cell. cell in your body. But it's very different. Every cell in my body is not going to develop into a human being. Yes or no? But I'm just, I'm just if you took a cell, a cell, the only the only cell that a man carries that could develop into a human being is a cell, a sperm cell that goes together with an egg cell, which creates a zygote, which is a human being. But a human being, this is Igo. We all have stem cells. You can do sure. Stem cells yeah, but you can't make a human being out of your stem yes, you cells. Can. How do you think we reproduce ourselves? You're telling me that any stem cell could turn into a human being? It's a stem cell. It can turn into whatever cell is around. So if you put in a bunch of skin cells, it's going to turn into a skin cell. That's so, what but a zygote doesn't turn into anything. It turns into a, a developed human being. So I'm not sure what your argument is. I answer. So is mine. Science says that at the very beginning, the zygote is a fertilized egg, a single cell, and that has all the DNA as, as a developing human being. That's what science says. It's alive and it's human. That's what science says. And I believe that that, that living human being should have equal protection and equal justice under the law. I believe in the science of vasectomies. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. Do you believe in mandatory vasectomies? No. Why not? Uh, because I don't believe that anybody... Oh, somebody saw my camera. I don't believe that anybody should um, force something like that on another human being. Let's think about that again. But a baby is different. The baby is different than a vast... vast oh, different. carrying half of a baby. Wait. A... a A vasectomy is very different than an abortion. So if you're trying to say that the severing of the vas deferens is the same thing as the killing of an innocent human being, that's those are two, those are two different arguments. Abortions. What's that? It'll reduce abortions. What's that? that has nothing to do with my argument. Whatsoever. You said you don't want any more abortions. We're giving you a solution. It shouldn't be just women. It should also be men doing their part if it's that big of an issue. Especially because... How does that... How, how does that, that, that defeat... Of men are, well, every rapist that produces a child is a male. I mean, that's science, obviously. Right? How can you make a baby without a male? Good point. And she could get pregnant from that. Exactly. Yep. And she should be tried under the law for something that's wicked because, yeah, there have been students that have been raped by female teachers. It's true. Hey, it's good talking with you. Thank you for a good, respectful discussion. I do appreciate it. And I hope you see that we're not crazy-eyed, whatever. We just believe that these are human beings. It's as simple as that. We disagree. Yeah, they went over there. I don't know. Yep. Yeah.
Yeah, it's good. It's good talking with you. It really is. I appreciate it. What's your name, if you don't mind me saying? I'm Alexa. Alexa, I'm Norman. Nice, nice to meet you. Alexa, you are. Camille. Camille, I'm Norman. It's a pleasure to meet you. And tell me your name again. When I met you last My name time. Is Damien. Damien, yes. The guy with the beard. Yeah, he's up there. Oh, he is here. Yeah, yeah, they're still there. Pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> Don't you don't agree, huh? Good, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What's going on? Nothing much. I do. I was just want to say that um, I appreciate y'all being on campus. And I agree with y'all. You have a good What's your name? Preston Green. Preston, I'm Norman Patterson. How you doing? All right. Doing our, you know, all we are is for equal justice mm -hmm. and equal protection under okay. the law. Okay. For all human beings. I respect it. I respect it. That's, I mean, you would think, I mean, one of the things that equal rights for all human beings, we have the picture during abolition times of the slave that people did not want to acknowledge that they were in slavery, that they believed that slaves were less than human beings and that chain goes down to a fetus because now in our day we don't believe that babies in the womb are human beings. I agree. I agree with you 100%. I agree with you 100%. God bless you. I'm in the military right now, so I'm, I'm fighting for you as well. Good for you. God bless you. Thank you for the encouragement. How you doing? Pretty crazy, huh? Take care. God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate that. I mean, you haven't been totally respectful, but you haven't been too bad. I appreciate that. What's your major? I don't care to share. I can tell you. Okay. No problem. No worries. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you guys go to any other campuses or just ours? Well, we've been focusing on Central. I graduated from here many years ago. So why? Why Central? Yeah. Um, ma mainly because I went here, okay. and I just feel like uh, you know uh, an affection for this particular campus and the people that are here. Okay. I feel like this is where God wants us to come. But we, we, I've gone and preached at Yale and Southern and other universities. Yeah. That's all I want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless you. I appreciate that. You know, they're always saying we don't have uteruses, right? No, I, I walked by a couple times and I had to go to class the first time and I I was in class and I was taking a test. And I was sitting there and I, like, I knew I had to come. God bless you. What's your name? Ella. Ella, I'm Norman. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You are? Cynthia. Cynthia. You were born again Christians? Yes. My grandmother's Christian. My father's Catholic. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, we're just standing up for equal justice, equal rights for all human beings. Could you imagine in the 21st century we're having this discussion still? So if you lie, you're going to go to hell. It's crazy. But God bless you. That took a lot of courage, a lot of backbone. You, God will bless you for, for your standing. It was not easy, but you did. So, I mean, I was here yesterday. We come as the Lord leads, so it comes and goes. Yeah, but we we're probably around once a week or so. He may be found. Yep. 
opportunity to see God is not forever. Yeah. Just as it was. Thank you so much. I, I don't know. The door of the ark was shut. Yeah, guy's name. When the door of the ark was shut. He told me his name. Shut it. So that question I can't is, remember. Bryce, I think. It was I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked down here last year at the student center with the InterVarsity group. I did a, a little seminar for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, be encouraged and stay strong in the Lord. It's not easy on campus. You both live on campus. Yeah, yeah stay strong. You know. Yeah. 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 Amen. God bless you both. God bless you. Eternal life. We want you to depart from iniquity, to place the trust and faith in Jesus Christ that you might have life. Amen. Romans 6 23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so would you turn today? Harden not your hearts, for today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice today, you are not promised tomorrow. God calls you to turn to him, to turn from your sin, to forsake your sin, and place your trust and faith in Jesus Christ that you might be saved. But this offer is not going to be available to you forever. You might not make it home. You could die in your sleep. You could have an aneurysm. You could have a heart attack. You could die in a million different ways. And when you die, you'll face judgment, ma'am. It's a problem because you'll go to hell. But I don't want you to. I love you. I want you to go to heaven. Well, repent of that. And place your trust and faith in Jesus and you can go to heaven, ma'am. And he can change your heart away from homosexuality. He can change your heart towards his design, which is one man and one woman in a faithful marriage and to produce children. What's up? Somebody's spitting your fucking shoe. Oh, what's, what's, I got your eyes. I got your eyes. So you're deceived. I mean, do you no, know no, that? No, 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 no. I have, it has nothing to do you're, with you. You're, you're lukewarm, no, 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 no. you're deceived, is, and you're a liar. This is a prank. You look. Well, you claimed to be a Christian earlier, and then you spent all day trying to stop the preaching of the cross. You're not preaching. You're preaching stuff to people, that, and they're going to not like it. You have to preach it to a way that the people Jesus. are going to love it. Oh, is that what Jesus did? Did Jesus way... preach the Pharisees things that they liked? No, sir. He, he didn't. No, he preached the truth. You're, you're, you're the spirit of Antichrist, you're not, you're not sir. Jesus and, and they say that man lies, right? Yeah. The Bible was documented by what? Is inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Find a lie in the Bible. So you don't. So you're saying God's a liar. The Bible says, "Let every man be true. Let every man be a liar, but God be true." It was documented by. So you're calling God a liar. He said, "Heaven and earth shall pass away, my word shall stand forever." What was it documented? God used men, but the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Brother, what was it? Who was it documented by? And God Himself said, "What? What did man do?" Lies. What is your point? Man, lies. What's your point? Que tengas una buena no noche. There's, there's, there's no lie in this Bible. God cannot lie. You can tell me that, but you're a man. Okay, find the lie. Where's the lie in the Bible? So the problem with you is you don't believe the Bible, and that's why you don't follow what Christ says. You deny Christ in your actions. Michel. Michel? De donde eres? De donde viene? De México? Que parte? Pretty crazy, huh? I'm Norman. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Scott, how are you doing? Yeah, we talked last time when these guys were here. This is our organization. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, do you have any questions? No. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll take one if you don't mind. Just yeah, no, I don't mind at all. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. How you doing? Good. Yeah, yeah. I remember you from the summer. Yeah. Get your tan today, huh? I do. My tan, you say? Yeah, tan. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Got a little crazy, but not too bad. Yeah, I went here, you know. 
Many moons ago. They call it a, they call it the zoo for a reason. <laughs> Not that bad. No, it's not not too bad. How about tonight? Will it be bad? Let's hope not. Okay. Yeah, I hope well, not. Yeah. Out there in here every Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm getting ready to go home. Alright, enjoy your night. Yeah, thank you. Take care, it's good talking with you. I'm going to be taken off. Thanks for standing. God bless you. How's he doing? He's holding his own? Good for you. God bless you. Yeah. I'm not sure if you see how stay a little longer. I was actually looking for you because uh, I heard so many arguments for the but I can't really recall it. They're arguing that because the baby is reliant on the mother, mm -hmm. it's not living. So. Well, it's alive. I mean, a baby that's reliant on the mother is certainly alive. No, we're not saying that. We were just saying that. He said it it's is. A it's connected. It's, it's the not. mother and the baby are connected. Okay. So that's, that's a functionality. So maybe, so. Maybe but that, does that give a person the right to kill it then? The woman. It's the woman has to it's not any person. Not any one person. Now, to you say, oh, I you should kill that baby. But if you are that person, you know above all the safety of that child, the, what would be best for that child. In the, if you brought it into this world. If you knew deep down that that child would not be safe, it wouldn't have a good environment. How could you know that? Whatever. whatever Do you hope to be a dad someday? Maybe down the line. Sure. Okay. I mean, I've got five kids, and I got a 19-month child, old child. So he's a toddler, walks around, gets in trouble, almost chokes on carrot sticks yeah. and all that other stuff. Yeah. So we have to continually protect him in his environment, sure. feed him, clothe him, keep him safe, and he would die without us. Sure. So he he deserves equal protection and equal justice under the law. I didn't say that under the law, but at the end of the day, you taking away the choice from all women is just going to backfire 100%. I think that there's 100% other problems in our society yeah, that could that be... Right yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... That could be focused on before we go straight to this, because at the end of the day, the foster care system's in shambles. There's a hundred other still kids in foster with care. And mothers but do you, and should you, should you? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, but but yeah, everything, back, everything back, else that's wrong with it, I think that if you actually cared about this, you would go and you would take the time to implement other policies and things that would solve those problems first, and then maybe we'd see the abortion rates go down half as full because I no, feel like... People don't care. But we don't know that. Most we, of the kids... Exactly. We, we don't... We don't. Yours, yours is hypothetical just as much as I... But the, my issue is even deeper than that, that all human beings are created in the image of God. Okay. Therefore, they deserve equal protection and equal justice okay. under the law. Okay. But when do you separate God and the law? Because N nobody ever really does. Because law, law is always inherently religious in some way. Okay, in some way, but there is laws that we have that are not related to God. Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, so in some, in some sort, it is, it is separate. But well, this, this would be a law that is separated from God. Yeah. Allowing a woman to kill her own child without consequences. It's murder. Sure, but that's just say one of them. But if you go down the list, I'm sure there's a hundred others. And I would say that how can I tell a good law from a bad law? That's the issue. There has to be a criteria. And as a Christian, that ultimate that's standard your, that's your has to be... But, but if you don't have an objective standard to determine what is right and what's wrong, all you're doing is using arbitrary standards like democracy or who owns the gun or other capricious and arbitrary views. Unless there's an objective so standard. You, you know not to go and take a gun and shoot someone in the head. But not How? just because the Bible why? says. Why? Yeah. Because there's a law behind it. Not even yeah, but where's the law come from? How do, you, how do you know whether a law is just or not? What murder is, but, is see, I'm asking you. killing. Thank you. That's justified. In what the woman way? Want is, is, in what is, way? Because she's carrying the baby? What about the rights of the child? 
What about the rights of the child? That's not the they don't have any rights. That's not a child. No, it's the dead child. Uh, it's a why? dead child. Why? Because somebody murdered it. Somebody aborted When does a human somebody being... Somebody aborted you know why. Hum it doesn't matter it why. Doesn't matter. Wait, 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 wait. The whole wait, point. No one does killing babies just to kill babies. That's what There's I'm saying. Does, is a human being... A human being, do they have equal rights and equal protection under the law, or should they? Should a human being have equal protection and equal justice yeah, uh, under the law? A human being that's viable, unexplored. What's viable mean? There are many, my child, my 19 month is not viable on his own. Yes, he is. He's not. If I left him alone, if, not, if I left him alone, he'd die. No, he's not. Of course he would. How long are you going to leave him alone for? Doesn't matter. He can't live without me. I get what he's saying. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I'll, I'll even, I'll even argue this. You can't live on your own. Yes, I can. I'll put you on a loan I can, I can up in Alaska. Alaska. You would not last four days. Because that's Alaska. That's, that comes because with you can't that's a, live, that's food but you can't water, live on nothing. your own. But if you give me those supplies to but do you that, can, exactly. So we exactly, and this child was not provided for. Okay. So you, you're, you understand I have a that? Yeah, I have a question. You have, are you against um, like birth control, IUDs, all that? To be consistent in my argument, which I want to be. If a, a zygote, and I'll start there, is a human being made in the image of God, okay. then anything that takes that life with malice of forethought would be murder. Yes. So I would have to say yes. So you are against it? Or you... I'm against it. Okay, all right. And I have practiced in my life, I, I mean, I'm 61. So we okay, used so. we used a abortive fascia birth control, and I repented of that because I think it's wrong. I respect that because it's consistent, but at the same time, like, you think that we've come so far in all these adva advancements and all this, yeah. that, and the next thing. Like, we have all these medications now for everything. You understand? So, why this one thing? Say, like, you thought, oh, you know, let's take away. Every man has to get a vasectomy. What if that went into law tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Then there's terrible. no more human life. What are, what are we supposed to do about that? Yeah. I, I, first of all, it would be is wrong it just, to okay? do that. No, but is it just okay because... No, not okay. Well, well, but there's a very difference between... And I had a vasectomy. So okay. there's a very different... And I tried to get it reversed, by the way, because I repented of it. The, to sever a vas deferens so that the sperm is not delivered and killing an innocent baby. Vastly different. Okay, so you really just come down to that singular point of conception. Because I'm a Christian, okay. and as a Christian, my objective standard is all human beings are made in the image of God. Yeah. Okay. And therefore, they deserve equal justice and equal protection. Innocent human beings, equal justice and equal protection under the law from the moment of fertilization. Okay. And I want there to be law so that this doesn't happen. But this isn't a result of instant fertilization. You, like most, no, no. I was, uh, can, you, yeah. can you agree that most abortions will not be at six, seven, eight months down the line where we're going to most be seeing abortions these actually full-grown? No, I agree. And that's why people like Trump, he's like, well, I'm against late-term late abortion. Well, you know what? 99% of abortions that that's, take place are not. So he is actually a pro-choice candidate. I was, that's what I was going to say. But at the same time, like... The fine line, I mean, I know some people that are, that'll be pro birth control and anti-abortion. It just doesn't really click. They're not me. consistent. I'm, I, at least I'm consistent. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that I can at least respect that you do that. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, if you really have that big of a problem with it, it's still just new technology, new medication. You're taking a pill every day. Regardless, you're, the fertilization's there. And then, what, it's gone. But if you take an abortion pill six weeks later, it's but wrong. My, my argument argument would be the consistency yeah. of my argument and I'll it would be I that that slavery was wrong because God says all human beings are created in the image of God and they in the Dred Scott decision they said that slaves were actually kind of four-fifths person they're not really human beings so we have a right to enslave them in Nazi Germany Adolf Hitler did not believe that Jews were actually human beings. He believed they were subhuman beings and we're holding back evolution. So we have a legislative right to kill them and a duty to kill them because they're not really human beings. Here we are in the 21st century and the brainwashing of all these people are that that zygote, that embryo, that fetus, that child in the womb is not really a human being so we have a legal right to kill them. It's the same philosophy. But see, my philosophy is built upon an objective revelation that God has given us in the Bible. 
and so it doesn't change. Wait, so I, I just have one question. Yeah. Right, so you agree abortion is murder? Yes. Even though it's justifiable? No, there's no justifiable there murder. If a 12-year-old was raped and she has I would say, child and she is going to die unless she No, that's a hypothetical that does not happen. But, no, 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 because this, this goes... No, no, because, because he's going to say he wants to try and say both. I want to say both. Okay. But he doesn't understand that sometimes he can't say both. Yeah, no, no, I do understand in that I've never heard of an instance where a baby had to be killed in order to save the life of a mother. There's no incident <laughs> that I have never seen. If you could, can, I'll be back. You can I'll be Google back. Search it. I was going to say, Google I was search search it. Yeah, take a go. Where they would Google claim that a doctor, a doctor said to my wife, my my first wife, that if she does not get an abortion, that she is going to risk her life. That baby, yeah, two of risk. them. That's yeah. called a risk. No, but a she risk. would. If but that baby. If a doctor says you're, you're going to die. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If a doctor says you're going to die. The doctor doesn't happen. know that. But in you, fact, you I know plenty. Your wife I know plenty of women. A risk is. I know plenty of women. Going outside is a risk. I know plenty of women that were told by physicians that if they don't abort, let me finish. They don't abort this child, she's going to die and that baby's going to die. And I can't tell you how many women said, I kept that baby and that she continued to live. Sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes X-rays are wrong. You can have an X-ray at one place but when it, when and it says it's broken, the next place. But we don't have a right to, a doctor with a Hippocratic oath does not have a right to take life. He is, his, his or her duty is to do no harm and save life. But if the woman says do it, why are you against that? Because she's killing another human being. But what if it's justified? How's it justified? As in, can, can I, I'm, I'm going I'm to go out on a, I'm going to go out on a limb here and maybe you're going to miss understand me. A slave owner said, this is my slave, my choice, and I'm justified in killing that slave because he or she disobeyed me. So I'm going to, and allowed it. So is that justified? That's what I'm saying. And that's why the law Was it a, exactly. That's why we want to change the law. This was put into law all that great, whatever, right? As as we said before, I'm just going to go out of the yeah. you, I, you lead your, I'm going to say this, you probably lead your life a lot by your religion, right? Oh, it's everything. It's everything. It's a, a lot of big part of your life, right? It's, so, it's all my life. All your life. So, as a person that leads their life like that, I'm sure that you would want 100% of our laws to be aligned with all these Christian um, beliefs and all this stuff, but at the same time, we have gotten to a point in time where we have these separated for a reason, and bigger picture, this is not going to do anything for the big, the greater good. Like, if you want to go after all the... So where, what is the foundation of law? Let me, I, I, want, I hear your argument, I get, I get it. So what is the foundation of law? How do you determine whether a law is a good, a just law or an unjust law? Just law is trial and error. Trial and error. Trial and error. I mean, we'd have we'd have have had thousands of years of trial and error. And how'd that go in the 20th century with Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler and Pol Pot and and, and Zedong uh, Mao? How'd that go? Because what they did is that they were atheistic governments that jettisoned the objective standard of God's law and they made up law based upon the theory of evolution, which is the survival of the fittest, right? Survival of the fittest is, I got the gun, I'm fitter than you. You don't like it? You die. That's Joseph Stalin, that's Adolf Hitler. That's why it must, all law must be founded upon an objective standard like the Ten Commandments. Well, not like as the Ten Commandments. But say that was all right, last century, whatever. We, let's just call it now, I would say America is one of the biggest empires in the world. Right? Yeah, absolutely. We have been on top for a while now. We are the largest military, all this stuff. We don't, we have, so we have some laws based on Christianity, obviously, but we still have it separated for a reason. We've been going this strong for a reason. So I, just I, don't, don't, I don't know how you could separate law from some form of moral basis. That's my point. It's either it's either biblical law or it's humanistic law. And we have we have a law system that's kind of like a Venn diagram. Yeah. And this would be humanistic law that we have the right to slaughter innocent human beings. But I just don't understand how this is the one out of, I'm sure there are hundreds of other inaccuracies that are allowed our laws that 
you hyper fixate on, you decide, oh, this is you? the one you that, you know, I'm going to come out here. And your your belief is just, your morals is based on your belief? Um, I'm not confused. Like, your morals is based on Why don't you take interest in any of the other laws? Um, because this is the place, I believe that there's a holocaust that's happening. Okay. That's worse than the holocaust in Nazi Germany or under Joseph Stalin. Because we know that there have been at least at least 100 million babies that have been slaughtered under since abortion became illegal. At least 100 million. Because we don't even register the abortion pill anymore. Taking a pill to terminate a baby is murder with malice of forethought. And so they distribute them freely here in the campus. And if these are human beings, we have, how many children have been slaughtered on this campus according to biblical no, law and, and, and so forth? And that's your belief, But so we, we have the greatest Holocaust happening right now. If we were in Nazi Germany, and you were a German student, it's like we have the right to kill those Jews because they're less bad. It's, I, I think that's your belief 100%, but I would nowhere near I think you would. Nazi Germany. Uh, um, the slaughter, <laughs> the slaughter, the legal slaughter of innocent babies, I would say this is worse than Nazi Germany because we have legal protection of women to kill their own offspring and, and men and so forth. So we have a greater Holocaust than happened in Nazi Germany based upon our unchristian laws. So that's why I believe there's a Holocaust. You ever see, I want you to look up something. It's called Sing a Little Louder. Uh, sing a Little Louder, okay? It's a, it's a man that was in Nazi Germany as a boy, true story. His church had a railroad line that went right in front of that on Sunday morning and they would hear the trains going with the Jews in it. One day, that train stopped and they could hear people going, Get us out of here! Get us out of here! Please help us! Help us! Right? You know what the pastor did? He started singing. The Almighty for whatever song it was. And he got everybody singing and he got the organist playing so everybody would not hear the cries of those Jews in those cars. And eventually the, the thing went along and nobody would go out because they were afraid of the Nazis, they were afraid of all that kind of people, right? We live in a nation where the Church of Jesus Christ in the United States of America is that. And the blame, I'm not even so much blaming y'all, I would blame the Church of Jesus Christ. There's a man that said, Every abortion clinic should have a sign in front of it that says, open by permission of the church. We have abortion and child sacrifice, not so much because of Central Campus as much as we do because the church has failed and pastors have no backbone. I would say... And we're in the worst Holocaust that we have ever had in the history of humanity. Why I honestly... How, why, why, why would you label it as a Holocaust? That's what, do you know what Holocaust, Holocaust means? The, the, what, yeah. what does it mean? Uh, over 100 million children have been slaughtered in this Holocaust. A Holocaust literally means a, a burnt sacrifice is what the word ultimately means. Holocaust is burnt sacrifice. So what we're doing is we're sacrificing our children based on, oh, this is not a good time for me to have a baby. I got to get my degree. I can't really afford anything. And the million other reasons why women will kill their... Everybody will pull out the rape. And, let me just finish this. They'll pull out the rape and the incest and these extreme cases to keep it all legal. But I would say most of the reasons that women terminate their own offspring is because of inconvenience. Okay, so okay, that, okay that's, no, no, that's their right. To that point. It is their right, but it shouldn't be. To that point. To that but point. why? So <laughs> in, 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 a, in a just, perfectly just world, whatever, still having that choice, they have that choice, whatever. When you take that away, you take that whole option away, right? Mm -hmm. What happens when there is wrongful pregnancies that... Like I just said, like those one in a million, sure. Like maybe it's he not wants everyone. Them to have them. That's his whole that, stance. That's you think that they should to be have them? to be Absolutely. consistent with my worldview. Yes, yeah, you would you would have to. All right, I don't I don't think that the one maybe the one for the many argument. Is mm. I'm not a utilitarian. Valid. Yeah, I mean, it's just I think that there are those situations, and but that how do you? It's a reality. But yeah, who, who right. is the one that decides that? Who decides when a human being, an innocent human being, should live and die? But you're not carrying that child. You're not having that child. I provide for, I have, I have five children, and I've provided for all of my children. And I have a 19-month child. That's, that's really great, but for those women who are being raped or 
put, have a child put them at 12 years old and they have to have that child? Why should you execute the child? If this, from my worldview, this is, this is a, but that baby is a human being. So why would I acquiesce and say, well, we have an instance now where it's okay to slaughter another human being. Because there already is a pre-existing human being that's had 12 years of life experience up to that point. And the rape is terrible. Wrongful, wrongful Absolutely. Pregnancy. And Absolutely. All this emotional damage, emotional stress, not to mention the money. But why, cost but why would we add, first of all, I would say the rapist needs to be tried and if found guilty, prosecuted, and I would say executed. Okay. Believe it or not, I would believe in death penalty uh, I, for that person. I, no, I, I agree. I agree with rapists. Second, why would we execute the child for the sins of the father? But it's not so much an execution as that. Well, that, again, we have an extreme cases that I have not known of any instance where a woman must kill that child or she's going to die. Maybe I've never, I've never seen that. In forethought, the doctors prob or whatever, they probably are not able to tell. Hey, they this can't. pregnancy is going wrong, and we're going to need to terminate the child. Right? They probably aren't going to be able to tell that. But when the mother is dead after the fact, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're sitting there going, "Okay, there are things that we could have done to save this yeah. woman's life that's been on this earth for 18 years. Yeah. Instead, now she's dead, and this terrible living when that was completely preventable and by killing the child. Yes, because. Not, you know, not only not only that, sure, that child is dead, but... But we can't tell that. Hey, God bless you, sir. Hey, that's a great argument. Why don't you come over and have an intelligent argument? Or are you incapable? You're incapable. Try having a real argument. See, that, 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 that come on. A woman, yeah. say a woman has a, a weak heart, right? <laughs> That's, there's, there's a yeah, difference that's between that and having a conversation. That's what I'm saying. Taking that's what I'm saying. Because you guys are having a, a, a civilized yeah, actual yeah. discussion about I it. Absolutely. I, and I respect, you, know, I respect you more than I respect 99% of the students here because I they're saying, my body, my choice. That's not an argument. Yeah, that's why I've been over here the whole time trying to talk to you. This is what democracy yeah. should be. It should be, it should be people having a civil, respectable, intellectual... And that's why the police are at bay over there because we have a shield around us. You know what that shield is called? The First Amendment. And I said to the police, you cannot tell tell me what I can and cannot say. I mean, you're not and that's wrong. why I'm not going to say to somebody saying, baby should be killed. I'm not going to get in their face. I'll say I disagree with you, but I'm so, not going to jump on them and put yeah, my hands over right, their 100%, mouth. But to your point, so you are 100% able to come out here and exercise one of your rights, free speech. This is, right, as of right now, a right for all Americans. So you using your free speech, you think that just because of your beliefs and the Christian beliefs and everything else that that's enough to go back and say, hey, wait. That's Absolutely. You know why? Because it's happened already. Okay. I'll tell you when it happened. Back in slavery times, Dred Scott decision made it so that you can have slaves, okay? There were laws here in Connecticut where, where they allowed there to be slavery. The abolitionists, the white abolitionists came out and said equal justice and equal protection under the law because the slaves had no voice whatsoever. Harriet Beecher Stowe, William Lloyd Garrison, the black man, uh, um, Frederick Douglass, he told his story. So it was the abolitionists, white abolitionists for the most part, though there were some black ones like um, Frederick Douglass, they, they did exactly what we're doing and said slavery must be abolished. And... After the Civil War, where how many million people died in the Civil War because of the sin of slavery? They ended slavery, and it will happen. It will happen. There will be, maybe not in your lifetime, maybe not in mine, but abortion will be abolished because it's an evil that must be ended. It has to be ended. I think that everyone has their own right to believe the way that they want to believe, think what they want to think, but at the end of the day, Federally, I don't see that happening. No, they, the, but the, the people in the slavery times said the same thing. William Lloyd Garrison was beat up, his, his presses were destroyed and so forth because the Christians of that day said, we do not want you touching this institution. And he persisted and persisted and so did the other abolitionists until the fact that we don't have slavery in the United States today. So if a, a, abortion is murder and you're... In your eyes. Um, if a, say like an old person is in the hospital and they're on life support, you can't be on life support forever. Right, I agree. So, 
If the doctors pull the plug, is that murder? It's a, it's a tough question. And it's a very good question that we have because we have technologies that they never had way back that's, when. That's, that's, that's why it is very hard to compare. Also today, even having Christianity in law, because so many laws say you need to include this technology that we have today. You can't just... I, I don't think that there's a technology that, that goes and transcends biblical law, the Ten Commandments, for example. I do think, I've, ha I've had friends on life support, brain dead, and that we finally say, we got to pull the plug. It's, it's time. This is just pathetic. Okay, yes. I had a nephew that died that way, uh, who's on a ventilator, who's, <gasps> like that. But Terrible. At the same time, is, it, is the doctor murdering that patient? No, I don't think so. I, I, consistently speaking, because because now we've taken away the means for this person that we could kind of perpetuate their breathing and perpetuate some sort of thing artificially. I think that, you know, I would love to say that there's a clear cut answer to that. But as a Christian, I do think that I'm not so much afraid of death because there does come a point where death does come upon us all. I agree. 100 percent. So I would say that there does come a point where they pull the plug, and I don't think that's murder. Okay, I believe that to an extent, but, but I don't. I, yeah. If you agree that if you don't agree that's murder. Yeah, I just don't. I, I feel like that consistency would have to stay with it yep. to support your argument. But how long can you keep it on? I, let, let's we that's won't pull what, the plug. That's, that's what I'm saying. saying. Or maybe I would say. I mean, for me personally, I would say don't put me on life support. I don't okay. want yeah, to be. Yeah, Yeah, but a, but my loved one, it was my wife or my son. Wow. Yeah, it's but a really have that's the a right hard, to that's a decision. Be on life again, support, again, right? that's a decision yeah. that we have nowadays. So but they can't. Not, they don't have do you, a choice on when they get right off here, life but then it's, There's other things like that around around those same Christianity mm -hmm. like biblical laws. No, I admit, I admit, uh, you have a valid yeah, point no, that there I are just, times where it's hard the absoluteness is difficult. But I would say, as far as abortion is concerned, that I I have no compromise. I know, but at the same time, like we have this technology for a reason, right? The technology in a way, it, it, con it conflicts with your, what Sometimes. you're saying, right? So we found a way with our technology to conflict this. So if some of your laws hold up, some of them don't, it's just kind of hard for me to sit here and fully be like, okay, you guys are supporting this, taking away their decision because of laws that were written 2,000 years ago that don't even half of them don't even hold up today so it's but my the, but the i'm going to turn it around on you yeah so then law has no objective standard and it's arbitrary based upon either the people with the power or the group with the power or whoever has power then laws can become arbitrary and capricious and we can make whatever laws of course they have slavery but they but as of today as of today they have there's all kinds of laws Slavery. We don't have people in concentration camps in America. Well, some would America. some would say some would say that the prison system is pretty much sure. slavery. I mean, sure. the old plantations, the, the old plantations down south, they're actually now prisons. The prison system is a hundred percent a completely different issue from this. In itself. So that what's is, your what's your whole? What do you think we should do if we do this? What's the next step? My step is to, as an abolitionist, abortions from happening. My, just like I will do, I will do just like the abolitionists. We're just gonna get them in the most illegal way possible. Well, that, we still have laws for murder. We don't get rid of the laws for murder just because murders are going to happen. My next step is to write and and introduce, get somebody, a senator or House of Representatives to introduce an abolition bill that makes abortion illegal and criminalizes it in our society. No, I'm saying if you don't that's what my next step is. No, but that's what they said. That's what they said back in the slavery days. You're never going to end slavery. They said it. Read, go back and read it. The North, are you kidding me? There were riots in the streets here. And there were riots here in, in, in the North when Abraham Lincoln gave the Emancipation Proclamation. There were riots because the Northerners did not want there to be a civil war over the issue of slavery. Look it up. Yes, sir. Um, I want to ask you a question, but yes. it's okay if I record you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? No, that's not true. There's still racism in in New York, in, 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 absolutely. And a lot of the slaves that were down south moved up into the north. And you know what the northern said? The Connecticut and Hartford and New York, they put them in ghettos because they didn't want those people in our neighborhoods. So the prejudice is still there because we still have sections. All right. So do you think um, racist? 
races are um, all about health. I don't think that a Christian who believes in the Bible can be a no, racist. There's so, places where they, they, they say that they follow yeah, but they're not they're not following the Bible because the Bible says we are all of one blood. We all come from Adam and Eve. So just because we have different tones of our skins, that doesn't matter whatsoever. We're all basically human beings. You know, they preached the Bible on um, on plantations. They had they had preachers that came and they pre they preached the Bible to the slaves. I can bet you they did not preach about Moses. I can bet you they did not preach about Moses. And the Bible forbids the would not support exactly slavery. They well, so they support. have their own version of the Bible. No, well they take they pick and choose. Yeah, they did. They pick and chose. But the Bible specifically says man stealing is a sin that is that you should be executed for. Hundred percent. I mean, but still going back today, to the you argument that you yourself. just. Yeah. Have all those laws, they don't hold up today. Like, we have technology, we have advancements that we need that don't... Okay, let's just take the, the, the old law, thou shalt not steal. What does it matter? Whether it's pirating movies, I don't know if that happens as much anymore. People yeah, downloading yeah, illegal movies, music, and so forth. Yeah, that that's, law that's, still, that universal law still, still applies. The Bible also says, thou shalt not cuss or, or um, say my name in vain, but there's also a freedom of speech. Yeah, there would be that under God, if we take his name in vain, we have broken his law 100%. So that there's a freedom of speech. Right there in one of the first... The Bible does not say anything about freedom of speech in the sense it that says, you have a right... I shall not say my name in vain. Yeah, but the second... God damn right now. The third commandment, um, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. But For God will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. So God holds you personally accountable, you being general, if you take his name in vain. I mean, you go into Muslim countries, you go into Muslim countries, and you say, Allah, damn it, Allah, this and that, they'll kill you. But in the Christian United States of America, we could say, God damn it, Jesus Christ, spit on his name or whatever, and it doesn't make any difference because we don't have a Christian foundation in our nation whatsoever anymore. Because we okay. have yeah. people Christian. from all everywhere. With the election this year and that abortion being like the top thing about it, uh, has that swayed your view on anything or Well we we have we have two pro ch sacrifice child sacrifice candidates. There's really what's the difference between Kamala and, and Donald? There's no difference. Donald Trump now has abandoned the innocent little babies in the womb. And so is Kamala. So I cannot personally in any good conscience vote for either of them because both of them believe in and will protect child sacrifice. Yeah. No, you're very welcome. Yeah. Well, I got to get going. What's your name? Blake. Blake? Pleasure, Blake. What's your major? Cool. You should be in the philosophy department. No, I appreciate the, the uh, respect of the, and you again. I met you last time. Yeah, John. John, nice to meet you, John. And your name? I'm Lacey. Lacey, nice to meet you. Thanks, thanks for a good, excellent conversation. Yeah, very good. Yeah, God bless you guys. Can I ask you the same question? Yeah, sure. Okay, perfect. Can I just get your name, please, sir? To deny God, to deny the truth, to hate the things that are good, to hate the things that are good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Norm, if you don't mind, I Norman. Oh, sure, sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Is this for paper? Or? Uh, this is for the newscast that's going to be aired here on school on. Tuesday. Oh, cool. So I was given the assignment of asking. Uh, if you Let me give you. Your way of how you're voting this year. Yeah, I probably will not vote. That was probably the most neutral answer I've heard. I I can't vote for either of them. Neither can I vote for. Lisa Seminera, she says, I'm pro-life personally, but I'm not going to do anything to change the abortion laws. I say that she's a political hypocrite. Where Paul Honing, for example, ah, just kill them all. He doesn't care. So I can't, I can't in good conscience vote for either of them. And what we are, we're, 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 Christian, we're Christian abolitionists. Think William Lloyd Garrison, Harriet Beecher Stowe. Frederick Douglass, we want the absolute abor um, abolition of abortion. We're not pro-lifers. Pro-lifers are like, eh, a little bit of abortion, a little bit, you know, to save some. We say no. Unequivocally, it must be abolished 100%, no compromise. Cool. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. You must turn and serve the living God.
You must love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. You must love God. I think I got it. Thank you. Thank you so much today, Bryce. It's really it's a pretty wild day. <laughs> God is always here, sir. God's present. Uh, yeah.